this law is Deuteronomy 32 4. The rock, his word is perfect, for all his ways are justice. A God of faithfulness and without iniquity, just and upright is he. Deuteronomy 32 4. Last week I commented about the rock. This week I want to comment on his word is perfect. Just think about that. We don't get everything right. God does. His work is perfect. Uh, I have got no prayer requests up here this morning. Uh, I do have a couple announcements to come for me. Uh, one of them, Terry mentioned it last week, and I want to mention it this week. We have a leadership conference. I'm going to put a sign up sheet on the board. It is, I believe, the 9th of April. This is for anyone in the church who is or expects to be in a leadership position. This can be musicians, this can be uh, Sunday school teachers, this can be anyone who uh, occupies an office within the church. Uh, anybody in that realm, all of our deacons, all of our trustees, it's open to everybody. It's down at the Open Arms Church. It's only 30 minutes from here, uh, down at Schenectady. It's a 7 on 890, and we uh, we have, it's just going to be a great time. It's, it's going to be all, it's all planned out by Trump here from the Muslim Baptist Association. The best part of it is it's free, and it's lunch. So, what's not to like? You know me, free and food, I just, it's part of my nature. So that's one thing. Also, men, I have not put it up on the board. I didn't. I made mention of it on the Facebook page. I will post the link to it. The basics conference, which I have talked about uh, ad nauseum uh, over the years in the past, it hasn't been held the last couple of years. This is at Alistair Beck's church. It is a men's leadership conference. It's for pastors, and Christian workers, deacons, elders, that kind of thing. It's a great conference. It's 185 bucks. I know that's a lot of money. It also requires three days away. It's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We call it Wednesday night, 10 30 ish. Uh, and you have five places to stay for the night. I've got like one of the bathrooms available at the hotel that I'm in. And I have the other, I think you have the pie to bed floor. But that's already occupied, I believe. So, anyway, uh, I will make it out there. I want to very much. Ah. Maybe I didn't. And I have one more. Okay. Uh, other uh, prayer, we do have two prayer requests. Um, a prayer for the family and the friends of Joyce Rose, who passed away. We've been praying for Joyce. Uh, she was found on our kitchen floor after her death stroke by her family, and she didn't last a whole lot of time after that. Also, the voice of the martyrs. Request the Christians worldwide, worldwide, prayer for the Chinese uh, church, uh, specifically throughout the Olympics. China is trying to make a big thing of how open and accepting they are of other religions of all peoples. Uh, it's all boys, uh, but we need to be praying for the Chinese Christians and the Chinese church. After the Olympics, they're going to clamp down very, very hard on Christians. I saw a number the other day that they have something like one. $4 billion invested in facial recognition software. Guess who they're tracking? Church members. It's a lot of money. They're really afraid of the cause of Christ. Thank you, Pat. Yes, our, our travel on Friday. Right. And we have to travel this, this week. Uh, we've been praying for the family and the life of Bob Drake, a longtime friend of ours. Uh, second generation friendship and family. And uh, we are uh, going to be traveling down to Bob's funeral down in southwestern Pennsylvania. Leaving Friday, we will be back Saturday night. I will be here Sunday morning. So uh, if you'll be a prayer for that, I appreciate it. It's a lot of driving. That's a lot of driving. Yes, yeah, like five hours Friday night, and then five hours to come back. So uh, I promise I'll try not to go to sleep. I knew it wasn't my phone. I checked my phone. Let's go for it. All right.
we do appreciate the changes. And Father, you continue to determine times, signs, and seasons for us. We know the spring will come. We sometimes get in spring mode before winter is over. And uh, sometimes we get discouraged and disappointed when things go wrong on, on our, our idea of the time frame. But Lord, you're in charge. And help us to work with it the schedule that you create for us, not the schedule the schedule that we create for ourselves. Father, this morning I ask you to be with these families, uh, the family of, of Joyce Rose, as she has passed away uh, rather unexpectedly, really, after a very short time of distress. I ask you to be with them, comfort them, and give them the relief that they need, give them the peace that they need. In that household. I also ask you to view the great panel as they deal with the loss of uh, and, uh, the adjustments that have to be made. Uh, that we are fighting me as we travel uh, this weekend and just back here safely uh, in a good frame for being here on Sunday morning. We pray, Lord, for the people of China. We have it brought to our attention specifically that they are clamping down on evangelical Christianity. The cause of Christ is going to be hampered by them. We also know the history. This happened once before, early in the last century, and we know that there were only a few Christians in China when it started. And we know that the oppression the church grew and grew. We could even say it exploded. Father, we ask protection for the church. We ask boldness for the church. We ask your grace for the church in China. We also ask, Lord, that you turn the hearts of government leaders so that they realize the error of their ways. They allow other religions to exist, or in their ideas, the state is the ultimate religion. So, Father, we pray that you will be good to the church. We also have to understand that your justice and our idea of justice may not be the same thing. Ultimately, your will is what rules. So, Father, we ask you to uh, be gracious. We know you're a God of grace. That is what we ask there. So, Father, we ask your blessing on the rest of our morning here. We pray that as we continue to sing, sing your praises, and then as Pastor Sean leads us in the message this morning, you will be glorified and uplifted in all things. In Jesus' name.
for the various dates, please feel free to sign up if you want to help join me. If you know how to play the piano, they have a piano there, and um, well, Ken did a wonderful job leading a cappella as well last week. So thank you, Ken, for that. Um, it was a wonderful experience. We had eight people there, and we're able to see Tony Leona is doing very well. So um, thank you for the prayers and the support with this. Um, speaking about prayers, one thing we should definitely pray for is peace between Russia and Ukraine. Pray for our service members as well. Um, I think I'm, every time I the last week that uh, I put the kids in the van, I think, well, we bought the van here from a man whose son and daughter-in-law are missionaries to the Ukraine. And in fact, they were sent out from Faith Baptist Church in Rexford. So if you could pray for the Gustafsons, um, um, as missionaries and just the whole situation there. Uh, so let's just go to the Lord in prayer real quick. Lord, thank you so much for today, Lord. Thank you to Sentinel went well last week and that um, we're just able to get in there, Lord. Um, Lord, we just pray that the, uh, the, the news about this uh, spreads and we have more uh, a turnout. Lord, we just want to pray for peace. Um, cooler heads to come about with this whole situation between Russia and Ukraine and NATO, Lord, we just pray for um, the troops that are amassed on the borders, Lord, on both sides, Lord, that they just use the best judgment, Lord, and, and not escalate things beyond what they have to do. We just pray that, Lord, this is the last and saber rattling, and that everybody gets to come home alive and peaceful. We're just pray this all in Jesus' name. Alright, so it's my pleasure to be in the pulpit, and of course, it is also a holiday weekend. Uh, this weekend is the culmination of two holidays. Tonight is the Super Bowl. Um, when it comes to football, I am blessed that I have came to Christ out on the West Coast. Now let me explain why. Here on the East Coast, we can have the best of both worlds. Many churches on the East Coast start services around 10 o'clock, like we do, and they get out around 11, 11, 15. You can go grab something to eat, and you'll be on your couch by opening kickoff for the first game at 1 o'clock. On the West Coast, however, because of the time differences, opening kickoff is at 10 a.m. But many churches on the West Coast also start services at 10 a.m. as well, regardless of time zone. Already, new in faith, I realized I needed to make a sacrifice. Either I missed church to watch, to watch the first game, or go to church and miss the game. I decided to follow Jesus and go to church. Eventually, watching football was less relevant to me. Instead of wasting my time watching some guys make millions of dollars, I had something better to do that was worth more than billions. My relationship with Jesus. This season, I'm proud to say that I did not watch a single amount of football. And what this I've led to is the unimpeded and more pure worship for Sundays during the fall and winter. And when it comes to who is playing or who is going to win, all I have to say is, I don't know, because I don't care. I reflect on my first year, that was with Lisa, and she said that when she goes to a Super Bowl party, the only team she roots for is the food. And I think many of us are probably in the same camp. And believe me, there's a lot of good food at these parties. Of course, tomorrow is also Valentine's Day. And this is your reminder, men. This day is to celebrate love. 
And there are those who want to claim Valentine's Day is just a Hallmark holiday in which we're encouraged to live by stuff. Men. Um, <laughs> what about the women? <laughs> <laughs> the truth is, Valentine's Day is based around a historical event in which there was a clash of two worldviews. Today's passage discusses a clash of worldviews and love at the same time. Isn't that convenient? Anyway, let's go to uh, our passage in the book of 1 John chapter 2, starting... Uh, verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anybody loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and pride of life is not from the Father, but from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires. Whoever does the will of God abides forever. This is the word of the Lord. Lord, thank you for this passage. We pray that in this upcoming message, we're able to dissect, take you know, what, the, what the meanings of these words mean, Lord, and that we're able to get a message out of it, Lord, and we're able to apply it, Lord. And be edified and glorified in these words. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so several weeks ago, Pastor Bill preached about how there are some little sins or appealing false teachings that tear people away from the fellowship. John in today's passage is reiterating this concept, but instead of sins and the fellowship, it is earthly desires and it's false teachings that can take somebody away from a personal relationship with God, with Christ. You need to understand that there are things that on the surface are not necessarily evil, but can divert our attention away. Today's passage is essentially reiterating Matthew 6, 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. In which a relation and in which a relationship with Christ is all or nothing. And I pretty much that the, this passage and what that passage is saying. The relationship with Christ is all or nothing. And how do we spot the worldly desires that could draw us away? Well, first off, we need to understand the clarity of terms and the clarity of our hearts concerning the passage. The world in this passage and in the Bible is in 3D. When I say 3D, it is because the word world, which is cosmos, used in this passage, there are three different definitions that apply. John is telling us not to love the world. However, John in John 3.16 said, God so loved the world. Now, it's plausible that we are commanded not to do something that God is doing, but this would not make sense of a merciful God and of us being created in his image. John, so here, here's what the three definitions. John, throughout his writings, have used three different definitions for the word cosmos, world. In John 1.10 and 1 John 3.17 and 4.17, the world is the created universe, which we should love. In John 3.16 and 1 John 2.2, 2, the world is humanity, which we should love as well. In this passage, and in John 16.11, and 
in 1 John 4, 3 through 5 and 5, 19, there is a third type of world, a system of earthly evil that has aligned itself against God. John is in this reverse, in this passage is referring to the third definition. And then there is another sticky word, love. Here, here it is the same word that is used in John 3.16, agape. When in reference to Christian or godly matters, the translation for agape is love. However, when it's referred to worldly matters, the translation for agape is to take a fancy to, to place a higher value on, and these usually are by means of emotion. John in this verse was pointing out to how people were, creep, were creeping worldly desires into their relationship with God. I went to college solely with a pre for a prerequisite for seminary. I had the intention of going to seminary prior to going to college. During college, I decided to go to a fair in which Graduate schools had shown up to put on display their graduate studies programs. Marist College had caught my attention with their Masters of Arts for Museum Studies program. Thinking, I love to visit museums, and of course there are god honoring museums out there. Museum of the Bible, Museum of Biblical Art, the Creation Museum. I'm sure a bunch of others. This might be something to look at. Who knows? To caveat, I learned that this would be taught on a campus in Florence, Italy. <laughs> right there and then, I started to have fantasies. <laughs> on the weekend, I could rent the best club and roamed the rolling hills of Tuscany. During the winter, I could head up to the Alps and ski. One sport I do love to watch is cycling. And of course, Italy has a lot of races that I could watch in person. Maybe I, I'll be more fashionable with my attire. And don't forget the food. I look deeper into doing this to the point of planning a trip on my winter break to visit the campus and speak with the professors. None of these things are inherently evil, but somehow I would also have to squeeze in a degree as well <laughs> on these many adventures I fantasize about. Of course, I would encourage anyone to presume pursue a higher education and or see the world. And of course, Lisa Lozeza Prometo Che Lungiono Ramo Il Nostro Viaggio. Lisa, I promise one day we'll go on our trip. <laughs> but I realized that I was pursuing this to seek a worldly fulfillment and maybe possibly glorify God as a byproduct. The more I pursued this, the more I felt a burden. The lonelier I became. It was a dark period of my life. To me, it was a good lesson in figuring out what the symptoms of when I am off of God's will, when I, when I am off the straight and narrow. Many times we see the worldly things, and they are appealing. Hey, I had spaghetti last night. <laughs> it might be a short-term mission trip that looks appealing, but in a reality, we're looking for an exact vacation. I'm guilty of that. Maybe it's trying to witness through fellowship, but it's on a Sunday morning. Maybe it's just for the football season, church takes the back seat and to catch up with God the rest of the year. But God cannot be mocked. 
You need to ask if you are feeling any of these symptoms coming on. When they do come on, drop this desire. Pray, repent, and return to God. And of course, we also looked at there's a dark substitution when you look at the world and not at God. Verse 16 is the meat of this passage. It clarifies how evil can infiltrate into our worship and theology. Many times the things that substitute God do not appear to be so dubious. Many times it is not like a gateway to more destruction, darkness, and control. For these things we are they are temporary and only it ends to a means. While we desire many times is not inherently evil, but when they do not align with God, then it becomes evil. When it replaces God, then it is evil. Desire comes from mostly seeing something and we lust for it. When we finally see boasting in the deeds that do not bring glory to God, but onto oneself. In AD 267, Claudius II became Emperor of Rome. It is said that he did not spend much time in Rome, but instead he was in constant conflict with many of the Gothic tribes in the Balkans. With the constant warfare, recruitment for the army and loyalty was difficult. To not dilute the soldiers' loyalty and to improve unit cohesion and readiness, Claudius had banned the marriage of young couples throughout the empire, insisting that young men could then focus on the military rather than love and their families. Now, being a Roman Empire emperor is not inherently evil. Granted, there were many evil ones, but eventually there's some Christian ones. Raising an army is not inherently evil itself, but being consumed with the desire for absolute control and prestige was the motivation. This man was possessed by the world. It showed through his deeds. He saw lands and lusted for them, and he sank even lower. But his desires blinded him to the impact of his decisions. Unfortunately, when there is someone who is lusting for power, there are also those who are innocent that are used as collateral damage. Many times we see ourselves wanting unhindered control, particularly with our relationship with God. It is easy to slip into legalism, placing additional rules on our relationship. Eventually these rules become contradictions to the Word of God. We are all we all have some legalism in our lives to a certain degree. We need to examine this degree and see if we need to drop it, pray, repent, and draw close to God. Third thing I want to point out is that there is a contrast of legacy between the world and those who believe. Verse 17 contrasts the two different types of love, lust, and godly glorification. The first part explains those who lust after the world. They will perish. The second part is about the true believer. One thing I enjoy about the writings of the Apostle John are his clear statements about the perseverance of the saints or eternal security. The statement, but whoever does the will of God abides forever, takes on a connotation of perseverance of the saints, or once saved, always saved. The reality is that there is a personal eschatological perspective. Our souls will outlast any worldly bad that comes, and we will live forever. Under the reign of Claudius II, when he banned marriage, there was a Christian priest or pastor from Rome who defied the emperor and went young couples anyway. 
This pastor understood that marriage is an institution that was created by God and cannot be marginalized by the state or forbidden. The name of this pastor was Valentinus, or we know of him as Valentine. Ultimately, Valentine was arrested and beheaded for sticking to what belonged to God. Honestly, who remembers Claudius II? It makes my point. It horribly just goes away. He lusted and sought out the desires of the world, and in his own fault, he suffered a faithful death on campaign after only two years as emperor. Valentine is remembered by the world. Even non-Christians know, know his name. Valentine was simply collateral damage for Claudius, but it did not work for Claudius because ultimately those he thought he got rid of came back to him through God's work, came back at him through God's working. As I say, who remembers Claudius II? Proverbs 16, 18 states, Pride goes before destruction, and haughty spirit before the fall. And poor simply, God's kind is remembered by God, and it remains, and we will see him in heaven one day in eternity. We are blessed to live in a country where we are not put to death by choosing Christ. We are allowed to marry. Unfortunately, the government definition of marriage is you know, loose. There have been many people who have who had to make the pivotal decision to follow Christ are given. Remember, an eternity spent in heaven with Jesus is the best exoneration anyone can receive after being condemned by the world. I certainly believe that Valentine received that exoneration. So what we need to remember is our clarity of terms and hearts. There is a dark substitution when you put the world in front of God. And there is the contrast in legacy. Will you be remembered? Now. Throughout this message, I mentioned the relationship with God and eternity in heaven and being remembered for good. The only means to achieve this is through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Jesus is God. He is the Son of God, fully divine and fully human, who came down to earth to live a sinless life and to die on Christ, cross Jesus. Our sins. If you want this relationship and have not made this decision, please come see me or see Pastor Bill or one of the deacons or anybody who already made this decision and will gladly tell you more. For those who have already made this decision, we are all tempted by things that look good. Remember that. God always is available and will be there when we stray. And God is always there for consultation of all of His will <clears throat> and not ours. And follow the agape of love, not the agape of desire. Lord, thank you so much for today as we um, have this message, Lord. We're thankful that there are um, many people who are in church today, even though they you know, clearly have the option not to be in church, but they probably have a lot of desire to be at a party more today. So we're thankful for what Valentine had done about 1,700 years ago, Lord. We're thankful that he took a stand for God's word. And not gave in to what the state had to say, Lord. We're thankful that we can celebrate him, Lord. As we, you know, eat our chocolates and receive our cards and have a nice dinner with our loved ones, Lord, let us remember this 
sacrifice he had made, his martyrdom, Lord. Lord, we're thankful for the message that the Apostle John has provided for us, Lord. Lord, I know that there have been many things in our past, Lord, that have gone in our ways. It may have been a vehicle, it may have been a house, it may have been a job. But Lord, ultimately, you let us know that those things are only temporary, but it is your love that's eternal, that will abide in us, Lord, and will have us live forever. Lord, we pray that for there's anybody here who wants to make that decision, that they have the boldness to come forward, that they have the boldness to come see one of us, Lord. Lord, we pray for those who are here, that if there's anything on our heart that's getting in the way of you, Lord, that we just drop it, we pray, we repent, and we draw closer to you, Lord. Lord, we just thank you for all you have done for us and for this message, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn page 391, just the words that just a little bit of transparency. My wife bought the chocolates. <laughs> but I bought her tank gas. Yes. <laughs> That's love. <laughs> yes. <laughs> number 391. We are called to be God's people.
was too. Like, really, when I came in, I thought, are you out of your mind? Yeah. I just. Oh. Yeah, I've been controlling the disguise.